resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, hello, my Next Level friends. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Artist Next Level podcast. I am very happy to be here with you today. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about Instagram. In particular, I want to talk to you about, you know, kind of seven things that you can do to improve your Instagram engagement and to grow your uh, Instagram audience. So these are seven tips, seven hacks that I've been using that have given me great results, and I'm sure they can help you as well if Instagram is one of those things that you really want to grow and you've been working at in 2019. So before I do that, my friends, I want to say it's great to be here, great to be back, because probably you noticed I took a little break from um, you know from the podcast, this particular podcast, mainly because I was being so busy over the summer doing all the things. So I decided to take about you know three or four weeks off from the podcast. So I hope uh, you know you're still here. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around. But uh, I'm back and you know continuing uh, to bring to bringing you you know great advice and more interviews that are coming around the corner and some awesome content that I have stored for you. And one of the things that I was working on this summer really hard was the Breakfast with Sergio show, which has really taken off. Uh, there's such a big audience watching the videos on all the different platforms, on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, on Instagram, and also it has its own podcast. And so it's called Breakfast with Sergio. If you haven't checked it out yet, I just got to my 200 episode. This week I just recorded my 205th episode, so I already passed the 200 episode mark and it's been awesome I've been getting so many emails messages direct messages about the show ideas for you know for the show topics that you know artists want me to cover and it's just been awesome i'm having a blast i'm really having a great time so if you haven't checked it out i invite you to just google breakfast with sergio and you will find it and i think once in a while i'm gonna bring some of those episodes here to this podcast even though it has its own podcast but just uh, some of the ones that I think are really really good that I would like to share with you and maybe I'll expand a little bit more after the, the episode after I share let me know if you like that idea if you think that's a great idea let me know you know send me a message would love to hear from you well my friend I want to talk to you today about Instagram Instagram is one of those again social media uh applications that most of us as artists are working really hard on growing our audience. Why? Because I believe Instagram is the premier, is the best platform for you as an artist to be at, to be paying attention and to be getting really, really good at it. So if you are not uh, on Instagram, it's a good, that's a really good time to get in because right now I think it's at its summit, it's at its top performing. Uh, we don't know how long it will be that way in terms of the audience that's there. There's a uh, big audience of artists, collectors, buyers, buyers, galleries, uh, curators, you name it. Everybody's there. And it's a great platform to grow your audience, to sell art, which I've been selling quite a bit of art through my Instagram as well. And those are some of the topics that I've been also covering on my Breakfast with Sergio show. But I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring some of those topics here as well because I think you might find them uh, useful for your art career. Well, let's go right into the seven things that I want to recommend for you. Seven hacks, seven tips, seven whatever you want to call them, you know, to uh, increase your engagement on Instagram, to increase your uh, growth as well. So number one is posting with consistency. This is something I learned uh, a couple years ago that posting for co with consistency was really, really important for me. And, you know, the more I tried it and started doing consistency of posts, I started to get better results. So, you know, you have to pick what you want, you know, in terms of consistency and kind of stick with that. For example, some of you may be posting once a day or every two days or maybe three times a week. Pick something and stick with it. Don't be random. Uh, Instagram is all about the algorithms, right? The algorithm is the software that's looking at everything that's being posted and is recommending the post to, to the people in your audience. So pretty much is curating 
the algorithms, what they do is they curate your feed. So you see what the algorithms think you will like because they want you to stay on the platform for as long as possible. So you want to be on the side of the algorithm. You want to play well, you know, in the algorithm's rules so that you can get seen the most. So also think of Instagram as like points. Everything that I'm going to mention, it kind of uh, gives you more points. The more points you have, you know, if you think of it that way, more love Instagram is going to give you and it's going to help you, you know, rank higher, be seen more and grow your engagement. And at the end of the day, you know, of course, grow your follower with the people that you really want to connect. So think of this as different points that you are just keep adding and they all add up at the end of the day. So post with consistency is super important. If you're on Instagram, pick something. Now, sometimes I say, well, Sergio, you know, I'm not sure, uh, you know, if I have that much content to post once a day. And actually, my friend, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, there's so many things you can post. You don't have to post a work of art every day. I mean, you can post details. You can post shows that you have had in the past. Uh, you can post also shots of your studio. I mean, there's so many things that you can post that is not necessarily a finished work of art. So definitely think about it, you know, Find something that works for you. If you cannot post every day, then maybe at least three times a week is what I would recommend. Maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if you can on a weekend, that'd be great. Number two, number two that's super important is reply to comments. When somebody leaves you a comment, go ahead and reply to that comment. Never leave comments um, without you know replying to them. The reason is, again, it's just it builds community and it builds engagement, right? When somebody posts in your com, in your, I mean, comments to your post, and then you go back and you reply, now you are creating a conversation. And Instagram loves when you do that. And don't just give them a like, but you know, give them a thoughtful reply uh, to the comment that they gave you. And again, Instagram and all social medias are about, you know, being social, right? About connections, about connecting with other people. Uh, a lot of artists see Instagram as just a marketing device, as a marketing tool. And yes, it's true. You know, it is a marketing tool. However, it's much more than that. It is what I call a connections tool. And use it to actually connect with your audience, get to know your audience. You don't need a big, huge audience to get to know them. It's actually, it's a lot easier to connect with people when you have a small audience. It was a lot easier for me to get to know my audience when I only had 100, 300 uh, followers that, you know, when I pass the 10,000 follower mark, you know, now it's much, much harder, takes much more time, you know, and you don't get to know people as much as when you have a small audience. So, you know, use that to your leverage, always reply to comments that people give you in a thoughtful manner, create conversations so that people want to stay connected with you and coming back to comment because they find it, you know, to be interesting having those conversations with you. Next one. So that's number two, right? Post consistency, number one. Number two, reply to comments. Number three, this one is super important that a lot of people don't like to do. Is uh, This one will be leaving likes, giving likes and giving comments to other accounts. You know, think about it, right? You want people to comment on you. You want people to love your post, to like your post, but you got to do the same. Here's the big, the big problem that I see happen all the time, all the time. Everybody wants, give me, give me, you know, give me likes, give me comments. And sometimes, uh, you know, artists come and say, Sergio, you know, but I'm not getting comments. I'm not getting likes. I'm not getting, well, and I always ask him, so, you know, how many times are you going or how much time are you spending yourself doing that? You know, giving likes to other people and commenting on other people's posts. Oh, well, maybe just once a week or twice. You know, well, it's not enough, right? You know, you the way you create community and the way you create uh, kind of uh, this this two-way uh, love that you give and then other gives you is by doing the same things that you want others to do for you. So, you know, for example, something that I do often is, you know, I take maybe, you know, uh, the first uh, few people that have comment, posted a comment on one of my images, I click on that account and then I I've also comment in some other pictures again. So that creates consistency of comments. Uh, also, they're more likely to come back and keep commenting on my posts. 
at the same time, I enjoyed, you know, creating that community. And when you start doing that, you will also begin to recognize the names of people that continue to come back and comment on your post. And then you can do the same for them. So you see that how that creates a snowball effect, right? You start doing that with more people, more people start doing that for you. And then all of a sudden you start experiencing more growth. You see more people, you know, liking your pictures, making more comments. All of a sudden, you know, where nobody used to comment on your post, all of a sudden you start seeing, you know, more comments because you are doing the same for others. So this one is super important. Um, Take the time to, you know, leave comments on other people's uh, posts and also give them likes, uh, you know, of course, as long as things are, uh, you know, honest and, and you really like their work. Don't just do it for, for getting likes back, you know, do it because you really are thoughtful, because you really like what you're looking at. And that one's super important. So that's number three. Let's go to number four. Number four is also great. Uh, and it is very important is to use relevant hashtags, relevant hashtags. As you post, you have up to 30 hashtags that you can use in a post. Now, I don't recommend that you use all 30. And depends who you listen to. You know, some people will tell you, oh, only put 10 or only 5 or only 20 or 25. You know, there's no sweet number. Uh, I am using typically between 20 and 25. Why? Because each keyword, you know, each hashtag is a keyword that somebody can find you with, right? So if you're only putting three, well, that image, you know, only has a chance to be found in the Explorer page, you know, in only those three hashtags. So you, you know, you're missing other 20 that you could be showing up as well, right? So you're reducing the amount of uh, opportunities in which that post may be seen. Now, the other thing about hashtags that is very important is many artists use the same hashtags all the time. So that can look spammy to the algorithms. And not only that, but you may be using the easiest, most typical hashtags like art, oil painting, uh, artist, artist, contemporary art. Well, each of those, although good hashtags, you know, they are huge hashtags, meaning that those hashtags have millions of posts each associated with the hashtag. So the likelihood of your account showing up you know, in the search page, in the Explorer page with those hashtags is minimum to none, right? Uh, You will need really a lot, probably hundreds of likes and tons of comments to show up at the top result for those hashtags. So you don't want to just use those. It's okay to use them, but don't just use those and that's it. Also find hashtags that are relevant to your post, but that are also small. Find some that only have you know, 1,500 uh, posts on that hashtag, find some that only have 2,500, or that have 45,000, 10,000, and use a variety in every post. So start from small to the ones that have, you know, millions. So from 1,000 to a million, five million. And that's the idea. That's how you get the best result because you will slowly start showing up in the little ones. And, you know, it's like a snowball effect, right? That can help you then start showing up in some of the bigger ones as you create more engagement. So that's a that's a strategy that I learned and I started using it last year and it really, really uh, helped help my account, uh, you know, get, uh, get more views from people that, uh, you know, were more likely to, you know, to um, follow my account because they like what I was doing. So, you know, that is very important, your hashtags. It takes time, I know, and there are applications that you can download to your phone that you can save hashtag sets so that, you know, you don't have to spend 30 minutes trying to think for the best hashtags or doing research every time you post a picture, right? There are apps that can help you that. with that. Just go to your app store and search for hashtag uh, apps and you'll find some. The one I use is called my hashtag. I really love it. It's called my hashtag. It's totally free. And I can save save hashtag sets. I have tons of them. I have a hashtag set, for example, when I'm promoting uh, work that is for sale, or when I'm promoting a show, or when I'm promoting, you know, a, a work in the studio, you know. And so I've been doing a lot of research on my hashtags, saving them, and it has really, really saved me tons and tons of time. And it is a super good way. 
again to keep to keep that momentum going from post to post. All right, that was number four. Number five, also super important. Again, this idea of, of when you use all these things, you get more points. Uh, kind of, you know, you get more love from the Instagram algorithms because you are using all the features that Instagram has to offer, not just posting, right? Instagram does a lot more than just posting. So one of those things is stories. I recommend that you should always have a story going on. Your stories, little bubble or circle should never be empty. And you say, Sergio, I don't have time to put stories and so on. Well, you know, it depends how serious you are about building an audience on Instagram. If you are really serious, you're going to be doing these seven things. Otherwise, then, you know, don't complain if nothing is happening. So use stories. What you can put in stories, well, that's where you share your everyday life as an artist. That's that's where you can share, you know, pictures of your studio, little quick videos, uh, what's happening. Uh, you, you can do a quick video on things that you're working on, you know, when you're delivering art or when you're doing things like that. You can also use that to put a picture of your dog or your cat. That's okay because here's the beautiful thing about stories is that they are going in 24 hours. Uh, some some people don't like it, but that's okay because that's the purpose of a story is just an immediate thing that will be going in 24 hours. So you don't have to worry about making the perfect image or the perfect post or the perfect anything because it'll be, guess what? You know, it'll be going in 24 hours. The point is to use it. And when you have no time, you have no ideas, all you have to do is just go to your wall, click on any of the pictures in your wall, and then click on the little airplane, paper airplane, and you click share to my story. And you just, you can share a couple posts every day uh, as a story, posts that you already have, you know, when you are on the rush. So use stories, and when you use stories, you know, use also some of the uh, features, like put some text, uh, put a filter, uh, use some of the stickers, you know, things like that to spice up your stories. And what you will find is that, uh, you know, people can see your stories as well. And kind of what I mentioned in step number three of commenting on other people, you can also spend some time in stories and comment on other people's stories once in a while. Again, all those things are relevant and it will help you grow even faster and grow a bigger sense of community among the people you connect with. So stories Super, super important, gotta use them. And stories that you really like, you can save them also as highlights. You know, you can create little highlights uh, on your profile with different categories. For example, in mine, I have a category for shows, a category for sold. You know, anytime I sell a piece on Instagram or outside of Instagram, I share it in my stories and I also, you know, save that story as a highlight and it is pretty cool. Um, you know, depends on your lifestyle. You know, some of if you if you travel a lot, maybe make a, a, a highlight that's called travel. Or if you do something in particular, you teach, for example, you can do one that's called teaching or workshops. You know, you name it, whatever. You know, the idea is to use those features so that Instagram sees that you are working with the features that it offers. That was number five. Number six is using geotags. Geotags. What's a geotag? Geotag. Uh, is when you tag, you know, the place, the location where you are at or where the picture was taken. For example, you know, if you have a show, you post a picture of the show or the announcement or whatever. And then, you know, in the in the post itself, you can use location tag to, you know, put in the actual gallery name. Uh, if it's registered, it will show up there. Uh, when you put the name, or if not, use the city. For example, in my posts that I regularly do, I usually, if I'm here, you know, I usually put uh, the geotag of Chicago metropolitan area, right? Uh, if I'm in the studio, you know, I may put the uh, tag for the Joe VR Center, which is where my studio is at, or if I'm, or wherever I am, I may use that. Now, if you have a studio at home, you don't, you may not want to be as specific, but you can do something, you know, larger, you know, like, for example, what I do, a Chicago metropolitan area, that means, and somewhere in the city of, in the vicinity of Chicago, right? So you can find which is the closest city to where you're at and just tag that, for example, uh, if that makes it easier. You can tag something as small as that or something as big as a country 
that can you can do that too. You can put Mexico, Canada, you know, US, whatever. But use geotags when when appropriate. It will really also help you out. Instagram already knows where you're posting from. Instagram knows where you're at. So uh, you know, it's just uh, again using geotags as well kind of helps uh, your community and other things that you're doing. And again, it's another little thing that you can do as well in your post. And number seven, number seven, which this one happens behind the scenes. This one happens behind the scenes is use Messenger. In other words, use Instagram Messenger to communicate with people. You say, well, Sergio, what does it have to do with anything? That one, you know, the messaging system doesn't really uh, shows to other people, only the, the one person I'm connecting with. Well, remember, it's about using the features that Instagram gives you, right? Again, think about this idea of points. When you use the, all the features that it has, gives you more points, you know, more reasons to continue showing your page to more people. So even though Messenger, the Instagram Messenger is behind the scenes, you know, people cannot see how many messages you have, but you're using it where that does it keeps people again engaged with you. Um, sometimes the way you can, you know, start a, a, a conversation or a message is through stories, which is fine. I found that uh, being a great way to connect with other people that I'm following that I may want to connect with. For example, you, you're you following somebody and, you know, you see a story that you like, you can just swipe on that story, you swipe up. There's a little comment section. You can put a comment and that comment is going to go to that person's uh, messages. And then that person can, you know, reply if they want or can send you a thank you or not. Using the messenger is a great way, again, to, to uh, stay on the platform and using various features that it has. So those are the seven things that I wanted to share with you today. And there's another one that I didn't, uh, let's make it as a bonus. I didn't talk about this one, but super important to is clean up your, you know, your bio, you know, your profile, your bio. When somebody looks at your Instagram profile, make sure that it's nice and neat, easy to understand, straightforward and very well thought out what you want to put on there. And actually I have a whole breakfast with Sergio episode just on that. But Let's uh, review these seven steps, seven hacks, seven things that you can do to improve your Instagram uh, growth and rankings and audience engagement. So the first one we talked about was post with consistency. The second one was called reply to comments that people give you. Number three, leave likes and comments on other accounts of other people that you follow. Number four, use relevant hashtags, super important. Number five, use stories to your advantage. Number six, use geotags, and number seven, use uh, the messaging system within Instagram. These are seven really powerful things that are going to help you out uh, improving your Instagram. So give them a try. Give, give a try to all these seven. Just try it for one week. Post for one week. Post every day. Every day put stories. Every day go spend some time going and putting likes and comments on other accounts. Reply to every comment you get. Uh, you know, every post, do some hashtag research, use geotags, message people out, and then see what happens. You know, do it for one week consistently. Say, this week I'm really going to work hard on this and see if, uh, you know, if any of these, you know, can give me a better results. Try it. Don't try it for just one or two days because that's not going to do anything. You know, try it for a period of time, I would say at least a full week, seven day and then see what happens at the end of that. You know, check out, see if you get more engagement by the end of that week, see if you are also getting more people you are connecting with, engaging with you, and so on. Check out, see if you get more followers and things of that nature. So I hope, my friend, that this episode is helpful for your art career. I know all these seven things and many more, you know, have been super helpful for me and my art career too. And if you are interested, if you want to check out in full depth, I have a whole course that's called Social Media Skills for Artists to Grow an Audience and Get Results. Again, Social Media Skills for Artists to Grow an Audience and Get Results. What I, you know, go is a video course where I go step by step on each one of these and many more. Uh, and I show you through video, you know, how I do it um, and uh, how to do the hashtag research, for example, in full detail, how to use the stories, things, tips and tricks for stories and all the different things and techniques that you know, have really helped me to really 
grow my Instagram and uh, it's helping a lot of artists do the same as well. So that's something that uh, you may want to check it out and the way you do it, the way you find my course, you can just go to my website at www.theartistnextlevel.com. Again, www.theartistnextlevel.com and in the main menu, you can find the courses. So you can purchase the course all by itself or another option is you can join my membership program you know, my coaching program where you have access to that course plus all the other courses that I have ever created on anything from selling art, uh, growing your audience, uh, you know, uh, approaching galleries, exposure, wellness, uh, productivity, organization, everything that I have ever done, you have access to that in my membership site, which is a great, great value as well. So just go to the website and then you can decide what's the best option for you. So thanks, my friend, for listening to this podcast. It's so good to be back again. So good to uh, bring you some value today. If you enjoy this episode, I'm going to ask you if you can do me a huge favor. Go to iTunes and leave me a review. Give me a nice, honest review on how you like this podcast. And, uh, you know, maybe a, a nice welcome after now that I'm back at it again as we also get ready for the fall season. Please do that. That kind of helps the podcast to get seen by more people. So that would make me also super excited, super happy. And I want to say thank you, my friends. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you at the next level. Goodbye. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.